Larry Charles <laughs> is the director responsible for the atrocity that is Dix the Musical. It came out a few days ago, only in select theaters. I haven't seen it available near us, so we can't exactly hate watch it and hate review it for you guys. I didn't go see Bros. I'm definitely not going to see this. We didn't see Bros. We didn't see Bottoms, which was also a, another so wait, let me get this queer straight. movie that came out this year. Bros, Dicks, and Bottoms is the names of the movies. These are all they're movies reaching, they're reaching that very, came out in less than a year. From, mm -hmm. They're doing really good work on the naming stuff it's very accessible right <laughs> it's, it's very accessible. yeah so to give you a summary of dicks the musical it's sort of like a queer version of the parent trap two self-obsessed businessmen meet each other and realize that they are actually identical twins and they have to get their divorced parents back together um it sounds awful megan the stallion is in it um we're going to talk about that. I want to talk, talk about, about that later. I want to talk about his comments. Larry Charles about <laughs> has had the most unhinged things to say about this movie. First of all, he made a shout out to Trump supporters, anti-vaxxers, and 9-11 truthers telling them that this is the movie for them. Oh, before that, we have a $20. We have a $20 super chat here from Fresh Meat 999 says, Happy Sunday, Bert. If you, if you think live, laugh, love plaques are the devil, my sister is the final boss with home family, with home family, love, laugh, live plaques. Also, t happy Tuesday to the wonderful Mary. So it says his sister's the home boss, is the final happy boss Tuesday. of the home family, live, laugh, love. But he says love, laugh, live. Is that, wait, are those different things? Is live, laugh, love one company? In what order? And love, laugh, live you... is a different company? Like, I, I like know. the idea that there's three and they're all separate. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's uh, play this video of Larry Charles. Okay. Here we go. Raving in his basement, it looks like. Are you a Trump supporter? Are you an anti vaxxer? Maybe you're a 9 11 truther <laughs> or are sympathetic to the January 6th patriots. Hey, Do you believe in a God that hates homosexuals? Hi, I'm Larry Charles, and have I got a movie for you? Me? I directed a new film called oh, Dix the Musical. Regardless of your belief system, do you love to laugh? Do you love comedy? Yeah. Do you love movies with catchy songs that you can sing along to? No. Then you'll love Dick's The Musical too. The Taylor Swift movie might have some good songs, but there's not much comedy. Oppenheimer might have some comedy, but I didn't hear any catchy songs. Didn't really sense Only the comedy Dick's in Oppenheimer. The Musical provides this form of entertainment. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter what you think or feel or love or hate or believe in. Even if in your wildest dreams you never thought you would, you will love Dix the Musical. The most anti-woke woke movie ever made, but also the most woke yeah. anti-woke <laughs> movie ever made. So come ye okay. proud boys. And so what's, what's funny come about this- Come ye proud boys? And ye oath keepers and ye Christian evangelicals. See Dix, the musical, the true sound of freedom, opening October 6th. What's funny is like, when he's not <laughs> making the obvious references to like right wing stuff, the actual idea of making a movie that everyone can enjoy is actually something that should be celebrated and what they should actually be trying to yeah. do. But they shouldn't be trying to do it ironically in one of the most muddled descriptions of a movie ever. Nothing he's like when he gives that description of it, he's appealing to no one. Someone in the chat said he definitely has the crazy look down. Yeah, oh, yeah. he looks like uh someone who would be ranting and raving on the street. His sarcasm so <laughs> actually highlights the problem with Hollywood right now. If he was saying that seriously, the part in the middle about this is for everyone. One of the most disturbing parts of this movie, it sounds like, is that the twins end up confusing the phrase love is love to mean that um, as brothers, they should get married in an incestuous marriage. I learned this in an article titled, Dix calls God a gay slur and its makers are ready to be hated for it. Yeah. Um, so they have a whole musical sequence where they call God a homophobic slur. I'm not going to repeat the lyrics. Um, it doesn't sound like this is made for a Christian audience. Well, this no. is... No, this is but my... here's what he said that I found compelling. He said... Um, Making fun of a movie with a moral is something we wanted to play with. I miss comedies that don't feel message-driven. 
Austin Powers, Zoolander, Airplane, with crazy characters just delighting you. There's been so many straight guy versions of that, so it's great we get to do a queer version where the absurdity is the point. The problem is by, ma- is by doing that, driven, it's though. automatically message driven yeah. by default. You can't, there, unfortunately, like I get what he's saying, but you, he, he doesn't realize that by making it that, it's, it's already d- that by default. You can't do anything about it. The movie is already message driven by default because it's baked into the premise right. of the film. The other thing that's funny is he says, it's offensive and gross, but it's also campy and bombastic and absurd. He said, none of this is real. The first joke in the movie is that they are twins and they just aren't this whole effing cartoon. And it's funny because he talks about how it's funny. He talks about how it's absurd, but I don't think that this would be allowed. If it was the if if it was somebody else making the jokes, it's only allowed because they're making the jokes. It's honestly surprising that something so a product so unfunny could come from someone that was involved in the making of Seinfeld or Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm. I don't really like Borat, but a lot of people do, and he he was the director of Borat. Those things actually did have some like actually offensive jokes yes. that landed. Well, here, this is just. Yeah essentially playing into what's already the status quo, which is making fun of religion, making fun of Christians, because they're the only group that will take it, and making something that is directed toward a queer audience. So it says, this is satiric, satirical, absurdist, deeply, seal, uh, deeply silly, R-rated queer musical inspired by the parent trap. Uh, it says, before the film's theatrical run kicks off on Friday, it's not to be taken seriously. It's all in good fun, and people certainly seem to be enjoying it so, so far. The problem is, it's only allowed to be all in good fun because it's on your terms. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if somebody else was to say otherwise or to make jokes that you would find offensive, you would not agree with it and you would say that it's a phobic of some sort. That's I mean, a problem. He's making this ironic video. Like if you're right wing, if you're a Christian, if you're evangelical, this movie is for you. But he's saying that tongue in cheek yes. because he's, he is intentionally provoking anger instead of provoking laughter from these groups. He's not trying to bring everyone together. He is trying to alienate these people. He's trying to make a movie for a very insular group of people that live in the major cities holding the rest of this country hostage. And that's why I think the limited theater release for this movie did well. It was being released in the big cities where all of the liberals and gay best friends of the world are gonna go support it. Do you think that his idea that the movie isn't message driven is like his fumble there is a sign that he just doesn't understand how, how much of a message is delivered through what is called queer cinema? Or do you think that he's just being dishonest? Because to me, it's, it's, it's plain as day that it is message driven just by the nature of the, the, of the film's themes. Yeah, I lean toward he's being dishonest more than he's just out of touch because he's made funny material before or at least been involved in projects that were genuinely funny. (laughs) Here's his statement about being offended by big budget films. He said, politically for me, ethically for me, I find it offensive when movies cost $250 million and the world is in the state that it's in. So I'm also looking to make a statement in the way these things are made. He uh, is critical of what he calls the media monopoly system in the United States. Quote, kind of an authoritarian big brother sort of thing that they've figured out over the years. They don't have to scare you. They have to seduce you. So we're all seduced by great TV shows and great movies, and we're distracted by these things. And we're then indulging in that same capitalist system. <laughs> and there's no way it's going to change as long as we do that. I struggle with that. It's, that's so, He's absolutely right. But he promotes it by being a part of it. That's the funny Would part about it. you say he's right for the wrong reasons? I, he's right for the wrong reasons. He's absolutely right that they distract you with movies and entertainment. That's why they're called bread and circuses, right? Uh, in a lot of ways, he's not wrong about all this. I laugh at the idea of him getting to decide what the ethic, what the level of ethics are for the budget of a movie. As a guy, He's worth $100 million. At what point does a guy worth $100 million start to question the ethics of his own net worth? Arguably, you could say that a, a movie that cost $250, $250 million to make as stupid as it might be mm-hmm. to make a movie that costs that much when they all seem to have no return on investment feeds a lot more families 
then the hundred million dollars that he has will make him sitting in an investment portfolio or in his various bank accounts, right? It, it, the two hundred and fifty million dollars that these companies invest in these movies pays for the drivers, pays for the actors, pays for the stage designers, pays for the costume designers, pays for all these people who need to make a living, and that's the actual beauty of capitalist systems. The problem is it's in an industry that doesn't seem to care anymore about whether that huge investment, you know, yields a strong return for them. So it's just, it makes no like sense. Like after the failure of bros, why would you try to make another movie that is just targeting an audience that comprises mm. what, 5% of the population? And he does like his, his kind of, his dec him decrying all this, he almost gets that indie would be the way to go for him, but these people don't want to, anyone in the Hollywood mainstream, they don't want to actually be the ones risking their own money to make their message driven no. movies. They want to take Warner Brothers money. This is and actually risk it. an A24 film that says still A24 the is, musical a, is still is, a big the is still I mean, a it's, big it's corporate indie. Now. Yes. It's corporate indie films. It says Dick's the musical is the very first musical from A24. A24 movies always lack the budget, but their movies are always full of heart. They had won awards and had box office success. This company is known for taking risks, so it decided to make Dick's the musical. And it, they can write it off if it doesn't work. Yeah. Fine. So he doesn't have to deal with the consequences when yeah. this movie, I, got, I predict at least, is not going to do very well. He has got his own YouTube channel. Uh, this guy's got connections. All, he was on. He he directed and and produced Seinfeld and the and Curb Your Enthusiasm. This guy has all the connections, he's got in, connections. in the world. He this has guy his own could, like Netflix docu series. He could make his own movie. Right. Fund it yourself, bro. And then Dick tell me Wong. about. Uh, about how uh, it's these studios are asking too much of you to want to either make a, a strong return on investment. I was also just reading this article the other day that I've, I've mentioned here before about the kid who the guy, the young man who voiced Simba in The Lion King, who turned down the two million dollars and two million dollars in, in the early 90s would be a lot more now. Right. Like turn down two million dollars to get paid royalties on that film. Uh, and instead, he got paid one hundred thousand dollars up front. And he wouldn't even tell them how much he makes now. That's like, that's how much he didn't want to, like he's probably made is he didn't even want to let people know about, cause it was his mom. He basically said his mom stopped him from taking mm -hmm. the 2 million. She's like, no, you gotta, you gotta do this. At this time they were talking about how Disney re-releases movies all the time. Like the video, the VHS sales are through the roof on all this stuff. Just hilarious that that they didn't realize this but it's weird to watch hollywood both at the producer level and at the actor level be like almost guilted by their success and struggle with working in a capitalist system that's benefited them when every level of their ideological beliefs tells them that what they're doing is wrong mm -hmm. it's weird well also their entire concept of humor is um, self-sabotaging because they believe clearly that you can only make jokes that are punching up rather than punching down. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye guys.